Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday, fun day. Uh, coming to you with a pretty cool video today. Uh, yesterday, I uh, got an invite to go to uh, one of my clients' house from my other business uh, to uh, come check out a collection. Uh, his ex-wife had told me about it. I reached out to him and said, hey, you know, I would love to help you out. I know you want to get rid of this collection. Uh, your wife says it's been in the closet for 40 years, and uh, I'd love to help you with it. So he invited me over to the house yesterday, and we went to pick it up. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you uh, kind of what came out. This I would consider a barn find or a, or a attic find. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys out there doing like attic find Fridays and stuff like that, that I like watching the videos of those old collections that they pull out. Um, what I love about this collection is it's very diverse, but also the condition of the cards is pretty incredible. Uh, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to turn the video around and show you what we got going on here. So first things first, uh, the guy's name is Larry. I won't tell you his full details. He pulls out a bag that he says, hey, this is just a bag of cards that I collected when I was a kid. And you can see right up top there, uh, Carl Yastrzemski, rookie card, uh, in pretty darn good shape. I'll go through a little bit more of that in a second. I'm going to show you kind of what, what he collected. So first and foremost, he had some sets. This isn't worth a whole lot. Uh, it's just like a 1991. Um, it was like all the old Hall of Famers. Then he opens up a couple of books. And in those books are absolutely mint condition 1974 tops. And it's two full sets. So absolutely perfectly kept 1974 tops. There was also 1981, I believe these were Fleer stickers or star stickers cards, full set. And as we went back further, he's like, yeah, I used to work in marketing and I've got a bunch of these Kmart cards. And I was like, yeah, those probably aren't worth a lot. Uh, cool cards, excellent condition. And then back behind it, he has these 1981 Topps Coca-Cola team sets. And so these team sets uh, are actually pretty rare. And what the best part is, is they are absolutely gem mint condition, like straight from the pack. I mean, you can see, look at that Johnny Bench, well centered. Um, only thing that I didn't like is that they're in these protective sleeves, but uh, he kept them inside. Uh, so nothing to worry about there. And look at that, like that Nolan Ryan. Just a, a card that I used to love as a kid. And uh, next we're gonna go to, he had some more sets over here. These were uh, just some kind of oddball sets. And then, like I said, there was a whole nother 1974 top set mixed in here. And every single card looks like the day it was printed. Next, we're gonna go to something that took me a little bit of research, actually. Melissa and I spent quite a bit of time yesterday looking these up trying to figure out exactly what we had. Well, this is a set of 1969 uh, MLB stamps, and it is the full set. And apparently this is really rare. I, I believe it's a little more than the full set. There's about 30 of these little stamp booklets, <laughs> but everybody you'd want to see is on here. So there's Roberto Clemente, Ernie Banks. I know Mickey Mantle is in here. Um, there was Hank Aaron, um, all the big names, Willie Mays. And uh, these are pretty valuable. Um, I think these, we're gonna try and figure out how to pull it off, but we're gonna send these off to PSA and get these all slabbed up. And then there was these weird uh, kind of oversized cards, 1981, um, still in their wrapping. Uh, we had quite a bit of those. Uh, this one was like individual. Um, haven't looked through those yet, but just a ton of these things. And then more uh, still wrapped up, looks like, New York Yankees, New York Mets, there's Fred Lynn. Um, so we got a bunch of those, of course, with every good collection, you gotta find an old price guide. Uh, what I found inside this price guide though was really special. Uh, oh yeah, a little bit more marketing stuff. You have this Pepsi Cola collection. This is the whole set. Uh, you can see there's like the circle card inside there. I haven't pulled these out yet to see who all is in it, uh, but really neat. And then this is the first uncut sheet. This was a 1982, some kind of marketing sheet, um, like a, oh, it was a Drake's grocery store. But inside this price guide book was my favorite find. So we all talk about wanting to find that big attic find or that big collection, looking for that Honest Wagner. Well, this one actually had an Honest Wagner, but not the kind that everybody thinks of. These are from 1936. 
and there was about 30 of these different types. Um, just little baseball cards. They're a little bit thinner. Uh, I looked these up, and this one, um, if we send it off to PSA, has significant value. Um, the one that I saw listed was a PSA 4, uh, and it was uh, listed, I believe, for $975. This one is in a lot better shape than a PSA 4. I mean, the corners are nice and crisp. Color looks great. And there was a ton of these things, guys. I uh, really enjoyed looking through this stuff. Uh, looking forward, I've got my friend Jim, who's uh, an old dealer in the baseball card and collectible space. Next, we had a world champion 1937 New York Yankees uh, 8x10 picture. Uh, and guys, this is original. Uh, I did a lot of research on this, and this is for sure original. Uh, this is Joe DiMaggio, as you can see on there. Uh, Lou Gehrig, Lefty Gomez, you know, Joe Vance, like all the big names. This is pre uh, Mickey Mantle and those guys. Uh, I believe this is maybe right at the tail end of Babe Ruth. or, or I'm, I'm not 100% certain. I'll have to find that out, but Babe Ruth is not listed. And then also in here were some autographs. So we had a Lefty Gomez uh, just on a sheet of paper. Uh, message to flight crew. Uh, would love to know the history behind this, but this was something that, that Larry had inherited. But you can see it's American Airlines, Lefty Gomez. Uh, I've got it in my head that somebody happened to sit next to Lefty Gomez and got his autograph. There were also all these really cool uh, kind of medium-sized pictures. There's Dizzy Dean. Uh, there were also some like team photos in here. There's uh, Chicago. Uh, I think that's the Chicago White Sox. Uh, National League pennant winners, 1935. And these are four shore original guys. And then right behind it, there's a New York Yankees, 1935. So that's going to be a team photo. And uh, with all good things, come in doubles. So there was actually two of those 1935 uh, team. Uh, so I'm guessing, you know what, this being 1935, Lou Gehrig is on there. Uh, Babe Ruth is not. So I'm guessing that Babe Ruth... Uh, I'm not really certain. I think he must have been done with the Yankees at that point. Right behind it, we had an uh, autograph photo of Ina Slaughter. And there was also an autograph picture of Johnny Mize. And, and bear with uh, how I've got these stored. Uh, I've actually trying to protect them. These were just kind of loose and shoved in a binder. Next, uh, you can see up here, I'm sure some people noticed uh, already, there was some cut from uh, post cereal boxes. So these would have been the late 30s, I believe 1936, Joe DiMaggio from a cut cereal box. And then right behind it was Tom Bridges, same thing. And then Carl Hubble, 1937, post cereal boxes. And somebody took pretty good care of those. Uh, Larry, uh, you can see here, he's got uh, Bruce Sutter, little cut signature. And then lots more of these uh, pictures. There's a Detroit Tigers, American League pennant winners, 1935. And then uh, some more kind of tchotchke stuff, 1981. You can see if you know 81 tops, those are 81 tops cards, but they say squirt um, exclusive limited edition on the front. And I'm guessing because of the hole up top, these would have hung on actual squirt bottles of soda. Uh, for those of you who don't know squirt, uh, that was a soda company. I think they might still be a soda company. Um, and then we had some, uh, some sets, so this is where it got fun for me. Uh, you'll see there are star stickers, uh, so this is Fleer 1984 star sticker set. Uh, it is still wrapped up, and these look absolutely mint condition. I'm guessing that there's a Don Mattingly in there. There's a 1981 Topps sticker set with foils, so I'm guessing the foils are in the back. Uh, this thing has never been opened. Uh, looks like the day it was put into the wrapping. However, uh, there is a little bit of uh, like mildew or dirt on the outside of the package. So hopefully that didn't mess with it too bad. And then we had a 1983 Donruss oversized card set. Uh, this is the full set. Haven't really looked into value of it yet. And then this was all just kind of loose 1983 tops. Uh, you can see these are absolutely mint condition. They were in a Ziploc baggie. And then I don't know if this is the full set, but this was 81 Donruss. Um, there was one package from the set that was open. So I went ahead and pulled those out. And you can see there's Ozzy Smith, Yastrzemski, Eckersley, Gary Carter. And if you look at the condition, guys, these things are bright white. Some of them are fairly well centered, but quality control back then was not to be the best. 
Steve Garvey, Rod Carew, Raleigh Fingers. So this is just that one little pack, but just loaded with Hall of Famers. And guys, I apologize if it's not very well centered uh, on the video. Uh, I'm doing my best, but I don't have a fancy GoPro, so I'm, uh, I got my camera turned around. Uh, next, this was an 81 Donra set as well. Uh, you can see this must have been a factory set. It has the puzzle pieces in it. Um, looks really, really crisp. A uh, little bit yellowed on the outside up here at the top. It's just from being stored in cardboard boxes forever. Uh, there was a 1981 Fleer set as well. And as you can see, looks like the day it was printed and the cards are crisp white, just really, really well taken care of. Next, we have an 81 top set. And as you can see, uh, everything was in here. I actually have gone through these sets, pulled out all the big names and sleeved them up just so that they're better protected. Uh, 82 Fleer, there's two of those in there. Uh, so those two 82 Fleer sets, same thing, crisp, clean, 82 tops. You can see right on top there is the Ozzy Smith. There's the Cal Ripken Jr. And uh, looks to me like a high grader, a little off center. Uh, I'm gonna send some of these things in to get graded, uh, the ones that have better centering. Uh, there's the Ricky Henderson. Um, you know, PSA 9 and that's worth some money, so I just as soon get those packaged up and protected. Uh, this one was an 83 Donruss, and uh, I'll pull one of them out just to show you. Uh, these bad boys are brand spanking new, still in the wrappers. Uh, down there in the back, that is the puzzle pieces, uh, still all wrapped up, never been out of the box other than what I just did. There's 83 tops and i'll tell you guys quality control wise these were the best so i went through a lot of these sets and pulled out some cards the 83 tops quality control was a plus um not sure if i just got lucky and got a good set or if that was across the board but those cards look fantastic and then next my personal favorite we had the 84 top set so there is my favorite card from being a kid I still have my original one that I got out of a vending box. Um, that looks probably PSA 9, just for off-center. Uh, corners look super sharp. Uh, so that might go off to grading. Next, we have an 86 Fleer. And of course, there's Jose Canseco back before he could grow a full mustache, uh, before the steroids kicked in. You know, there's Tony Gwynn, Kirby Puckett. And then we also had another 86 Donruss set and an 86 top set, but now we're gonna get to my favorite part. So you can see some pretty old vintage here. I believe these are 1955 Bowman, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there was a ton of these and actually in really good shape. A couple of them had creases, but that's to be expected because kids would put those things in their bicycle spokes and ride around like they were riding on a motorcycle. These were my favorite uh, find for sure. Uh, there's a bunch of these uh, post serial 1961 and 1962. There's actually a whole stack of the 61s here. Um, and I'll tell you what, these were actually very well cut, um, very well centered and in really good condition. Uh, we're gonna send some of those off for grading. I'll show you the grading ones we're gonna do soon. Uh, and just a bunch of different 50s and 60s cards and then randomly inserted in here was some 1981 basketball all of the kind of the the little mini cards that you separated out uh looked like they were brand new and then the big hits so we have the yes the yaz uh rookie card i'm gonna guess because we're gonna send this off to grading i'm gonna guess this is probably a six maybe a seven if we get lucky uh, centering looks pretty good, just a little discoloration. And then next we had a Larry Bird. I believe this is his rookie year, so 81. I'm guessing that's his rookie year. That card looked perfect. Um, I think centering is good on it. Uh, there is a chance, other than that middle card, because the middle card is off center, but I don't know how they qualify that with PSA since they're stuck together. Uh, if that's considered off-center, if they're looking for centering left to right. I'm not sure. Uh, feel free to comment if you know and uh, that's a bad idea to send off to grading. We will stop and sell it as is. If you think that one's a good one to grade, just based on what you can see in the video, please let us know. 
Uh, I'm new to some of this, uh, but I think that's a really cool card. Next, we had a Willie Mays. I believe this was a 58 tops. Did have one beat up corner. Uh, doesn't matter. I'm sending this off to get in an SGC slab uh, just to protect it. And then we had some really killer, uh, the post serial. That's a Harmon Killebrew, uh, 1961 Harmon Killebrew post serial. Uh, very, very good condition. Uh, so when I looked online, there was a PSA 9 and a PSA 10 that had sold. Uh, this one looked very close to the PSA 10 as far as condition. Even the back doesn't have any staining or anything. There was also a Joe Cunningham uh, in very similar condition, 1962 post. And then there was Al Kaline. This one's not as good of cut, but the coloring was really good. Uh, just going to get this one slabbed, hoping for like a five or a six. Not really sure how they qualify these things with the, the hand cut cards. Uh, two of these Warren spawns. So this one had a beat up corner, a uh, little bit of junk on the face of the card. Uh, just going to get this slabbed, hoping for like a three or a four. This next Warren spawn was a heck of a lot better. This one didn't have that destroyed corner, uh, no mess on the front. So hoping for a five or a six on that. Uh, so guys, that's what we got, but there's one last thing. So down here, not really sure how to show this to you, but these are uncut sheets. And I can remember some of these as a kid, but I definitely don't remember 1981 Donruss uncut sheets. Haven't had a chance to roll these out. Uh, probably gonna look into them, but I believe this is the full set. So that, that's my own inclination. Uh, this is multiple sheets in here of a full set. And then I'm not sure, I think these were 1980, 1980 or 81. Uh, these are the little game cards. You can see right there, Ricky Henderson. Might be 1981. Uh, I'll have to look those up too, uh, but an uncut sheet. These are perforated, uh, so I'm going to have to do some research to see if this is better to maybe get put into some kind of protective, like poster or something like that. And then last but not least, this was a 1980... I believe this is 81 tops. Yeah, this is 1981 tops uncut sheets. So those are really cool. Uh, tell us what you think. Hit that like and subscribe button. We appreciate you watching the video. Um, I'll give a little bit of like kind of updates on this collection as we go through it. Uh, as we get stuff back from grading, I'll be doing grading reveals. Uh, you'll see a lot of this come back. A lot of these 1930s, uh, we're going to send these up to PSA to get slabbed up. Um, especially these smaller ones. Uh, you're going to get some authentications done on some of the autographs. Probably that cut signature. Uh, that Lefty Gomez is pretty rare. Uh, so you're going to get that cut signature put in a PSA slab. Um, so yeah, I look forward to showing you guys uh, what happens and what we get back. And uh, also some of the stuff we sell. We we're doing this on consignment. This guy has been a client for a long time. Uh, has become a friend. Uh, he's retired now, so he could use the money. So looking forward to helping him get this stuff sold. So thank you guys so much and have a great day.